Raymond Lull, 1232-1315, is celebrated as a pioneering philosopher and theologian. Yet nestled within his extensive corpus, certain texts attributed to him appear to stem from later periods, embodying the thoughts of those who sought to extend his legacy under his revered name. This book focuses on one such document, the Epistle of the Approach of the Philosophers. Through careful analysis and historical contextualization, this text reveals itself to be pseudolulian, crafted after Lull's time. The letter, purportedly from Raymond Lull to King Robert, Robert the Bruce, who reigned from 1306 to 1329, presents a timeline that intersects intriguingly with the final years of Lull's life. Given Lull's death in 1315 and the complex socio-political and intellectual currents of the early 14th century, it is likely that works attributed to him from this period, especially those emerging shortly after his death, were not directly authored by him. This epistle, with its alchemical themes and philosophical assertions, likely originated from a medieval scholastic environment or a circle influenced by Lull's ideas, possibly involving his son or followers in the years following 1315. This publication aims not only to critique or expose the origins of the epistle of the approach of the philosophers, but to deepen our understanding of how Lull's legacy was appropriated and extended within academic circles of the Middle Ages. By exploring this pseudolulian text, we gain insight into the mechanisms of intellectual transmission and transformation during a vibrant era of scholasticism. The epistle of the approach of the philosophers thus serves as a window into the ways medieval scholars engaged with the monumental figure of Lull using his influence to explore and expand upon the philosophical and alchemical discourses of their time. This exploration is crucial for appreciating the nuances of medieval thought and the fluidity of intellectual authorship. The Epistle of the Approach of the Philosophers Raimundi Lully to King Robert In the power of the Holy Trinity and the innate goodness itself, Amen. As I, Raymond Lowell of the island of Majorca, have composed many secret books in the art of transmutation in past times, and as I am composing the most secret book of all, concerning the precious stones according to their virtues, which is the most di cult part of all that is done by art, I have transmitted it to you, King Robert, in the vernacular language, so that you may be more certain in your work, for the knowledge of all experiments is deceptive, as we observe errors occurring among any operations, both in terms of innuance and in the application of skill. Therefore I, I wanted to write all the books of my composition in such a style that as far as it depended on me, no error would occur in the writing, as you know in the books of the Testament and the Apertory, where I treated everything in the clearest language that can be understood through the art that is done. I think that you have fully read and understood those books. I also advise you, based on what you will indeed written there, to please God with diligent e ort in your work, and to keep everything revealed to you in the secrecy of the art, lest you scatter the treasure among the unworthy and God demand an account from you. Moreover, I command all those beloved by God, if I can communicate to them all that God has deigned to owe or you. When I passed through Vienna, I found a letter from you in my hand, which, upon reading, I perceived your diligent enthusiasm. However, due to certain occupations, I could not comply with your requests. Then I went to Salerno, where I extracted some books of medicine from the principles of the art upon the request of some, and you immediately visited me with a letter, where you intended to inquire about the nature of the blessed stone if a shorter path could be given by means. I have written about this in my other books. However, it is a futile endeavor for me to seek the understanding of someone who lacks knowledge in any ELD, as all syllogisms and arguments are never written in potentiality. Therefore, as I believe, if you understand what I have written and are not content with our ways, choose a shorter path by embracing my principles. You asked which of the three stones is more noble, shorter, and easier to obtain. I have fully explained this in my other books, but to comply with your request, I say that the path of minerals consists of two waters, one of which forms a volatile stone without labor and risk. The other when XED solidi es with danger, because this water, as you know, extracts from a foul menstruum composed of four things, and it is stronger than any other muddy and mortal water. Its spirit is only multiplied by the tincture of the ferment, and there is a greater danger that the spirit will evaporate during purification for anyone working with skill. This stone produces a shorter process with great strength of conversion. It is the animal stone, which has no end, for it governs the elements and possesses greater knowledge than any other stone. And there, the greatest secrets of nature can be extracted, not only regarding the composition of the stone, but also for the transmutation of any other thing, as I have explained in the apertorium, from which the EECT of this stone is in night. The vegetable stone, however lofty it may be and however great its composition, 
must still follow the animal stone and the rarefaction and rectification of the elements. And if it is prepared in such a way, its ease see as surpass the animal stone. But the great elixir from the vegetable stone can be so accurately prepared that it appears marvelous with such a powerful transmutative EECT. As every transmutation through the vegetable stone transcends itself in the power of goodness and greatness due to the quintessence with which the stone is impregnated, which performs in night wonders in the world. And every alchemical gold is made from corrosives and from the incorruptible quintessence, which disease with the ferment through the skill of the artist. This quintessence is a certain spirit in the mineral stone, mortifying and vivifying. In the animal stone, sometimes the highest medicine for human bodies is found if it is extracted from the blood. In the vegetable stone, the spirit of the quintessence itself is the restoration of youth, the preservation of the human body from all accidental corruption, as you know. The spirit of the quintessence is the one that tinges and transmutes if it is mixed with the appropriate ferment, and it is the highest, noblest, most eective, and benaceal work of the vegetable substances. You also asked about accretation. I say that all accretation is a diminution from perfection, as medicines have through accretation. The accretation of the mineral stone can be manifold, but it seems to me that its EECT does not diminish, only at the beginning after the RST, calcination, and putrefaction, which take place through the RST, well limpid, clear and transparent, and clariad water for 20 days, and nothing can be done in less time. Then the powder is separated in the heat of the blood, and it is distilled according to the skill given in the testament. And take only the last part of the water after the redness of the alembic, and in that water dissolve the powders, placing them in warm water. And let them remain covered in the warm water day and night together after the dissolution. Afterward, place the alembic on top and distill in it using a bath until only a small amount of water remains, equal to the weight of the powder. Discard this distilled water, as it should not contain any spirit. Freeze the remaining portion of water in the properly sealed purple vessel in warm ashes. With the frozen water, make another water and proceed as instructed, distilling and freezing, and repeat this process up to ten times. Then proceed with dissolving as many times as you desire, or until it can no longer dissolve further. And know that in each complete dissolution, after ten ablutions as mentioned, bodies are transmuted into gold in a certain quantity. You can complete this medicine within eighty days. In animals, I do not see any accretation except that earth with re will be powerful, and this is a medium-term accretation. Now, I come to Vegibilia, where the principle is intently, and according to my own understanding, more securely, because there is always a fear in minerals that the spirits will escape during ablution due to opening the vessels. But here there is no need to fear, because the vessel does not open before exation. And to keep you more focused on vegetation, I will reveal this secret to you. Take black pitch mixed with blackness, and distill it in a silver, gold, or glass vessel according to the method described in the testament. In the RST distillation, take only half of it and distill this part again, and take two parts of it, and in the fourth distillation, take a little less than the whole, and distill that part up to eight or nine times. After that, you should have two vessels made in the manner of the picture of Gemini, each having an attached alembic, and each alembic should have a large opening for the vessel to enter and it should be of equal thickness up to one palm, and the other is made to tee RMLI together. Therefore, put in each vessel one part of this water and one ounce of well puri ed and foiled ferment, and have a furnace made with ingenuity, where one re of coals can distribute tempered heat through the arms of the furnace, where you place your vessels and make a re, and this ingenuity is most excellent, because this re cannot become greater than necessary. For when the ampoules feel the heat, the ferment immediately dissolves, then bind tightly around the pipes of the alembics, which pipes should be wide around the alembic and tightly sealed and where the vessels enter. Let them be well closed and keep those sponges continually wet with cold water. And when the solution is complete, continue with Thari and you will see the whole dissolved ferment ascend with its water and it will distill from one vessel to another continuously. Even with this ingenuity, you will visibly see how each pound will distill twice in the day and twice in the night and one pound will always remain in each vessel, blessed as it ascends from one vessel, as it enters from another. And when you see it ascend and descend with equal re continually, you will see by what method the color of the spirit thickens and thins, and this is the miracle of this art. Because if you distill continuously for a long time, the water always ascends in degree of subtlety and activity and continuously thickens due to the ferment. And insofar as such distillation is lighter in re, the spirit becomes more subtle and potent, and it continually thickens due to the ferment. However, 
Maintain this method for up to 20 or 22 days, and the quintessence of this blessed water will thicken, so that it will no longer ascend, and when exited with the ferment, it will turn into a stone. And when you see this, extract both vessels and place them together in dung or in a bath, and immediately in one night it will dissolve again and freeze again. And do this three times and more, and the stone will remain elevated in the power and might of God, which cannot be well frozen, for it will appear somewhat thickened like oil. And this is the most precious method of all. However, you should know that if you put white ferment, in ten days the quintessence will freeze upon it, because it is a very gross earthly substance in the moon. But it does not dissolve so quickly after the completion of the zation of the quintessence, as in the sun, from which, as it were, towards the end of the completion, the time is not di errant in white and red, and God knows that this method in the easy of subtlety and power and goodness is more subtle and better than all the works of the world. Although this medicine does not possess those properties which philosophers claim the elixir to have, namely, that if you mix this complete medicine with any metal, and then the moon with the sun, the sun will turn into the moon. This property in our medicine thus prepared is not found, for the quintessence, which constitutes the entire stone, in terms of its movement and tincture, is ed and stabilized, joined with the ferment. And it is always exceed and stabilized according to the ferment joined with it, thus causing transmutation according to this ferment. But if you wish to make a universal medicine, according to the said method, you would not need to perform the exation of the quintessence on any ferment, but on its own earth, and then to combine it with the metal. However, this has never pleased me, because such dation is very dangerous and lengthy, and rarely is the proper earth well natural, and even if it were well natural. Its EETs after completion are not found to be of such EKC in power as here, when the quintessence is XC upon another ferment, where dation occurs quickly and the EETTs are swift and stronger. If you know the causes, as I suppose, why the medicine transmutes, you will lay RM that I speak the truth. So hold on here, I have made my ingenuity known to you. And know that through the tenth act of distillation, if you dissolve gold in it, then send the water to Y.O. slowly with a gentle re, and now they place the gold in a moist place or a bath. It will dissolve by itself in four days. And this solution is potable gold, having a night virtues, as I wrote in the book on the preservation of human life. Furthermore, if you mix this well-dissolved gold with mercury sublimated seven times with vitriol, even if one part is golden, let there be seven parts of living silver. And after you have sublimated it and pasted several times, always reducing the sublimate onto the feces, it will ex mercury into a penetrating and tinging medicine. Another miracle, if one ounce of this dissolved gold were placed by itself in a very slow RE for eight days with a hundred parts of mercury, it would entirely congeal into gold. These are indeed wonders in nature, and yet all of this comes from the part of the aqueous spirit, which is inseparably seed in the solution of gold with gold. And afterwards, through deep ingenuity, you can combine the methods of minerals and vegetals, and compose a high medicine in a short way by distilling vegetal stone in such a distillation that the entire water is without phlegm. And this is often achieved in the FDH operation. You shall have the best vitriol well bright and the best cinnabar in equal powder, and by mixing them together, triture it exceedingly well, and dry in the sun, and then around coals, so that you see how all the wateriness is thrown out into your dryness, and distill with gentle heat at the beginning, and with stronger heat at the end. As is the custom in the water of the philosophers and the spirit of the quintessence of vitriol and cinnabar, or antimony. Those who chi wise study the mineral stone will be mixed and united with the spirit of the quintessence of our blessed burning water, which spirit is the soul of the vegetal stone, as you know. And this continues up to ten times, starting from the FDH distillation, and thus in these bodies you continue the distillation VE times. And keep in mind that your substances are thoroughly dried and arid before you throw them into water so that the whole water is dried out. Only the spirit remains, which through the strength of RE is joined to the spirit of the burning water. And in each distillation you should add new substances. Once you have completed the 10th distillation of the burning water, add golden weight, as mentioned above in the case of vegetables by themselves, and place them in the furnace, arranging each one as instructed. And then you will see wonders, for it is completed in 10 days, or scarcely so. And this is because one spirit thickens another and because the spirit of the quintessence of vitriol is more exceed and thick. As the spirit of the FEH essence of water feeds, and also there is a greater harmony between the spirit of vitriol and the nature of gold, because both originate from the same principles, being minerals. Therefore, the spirit of vitriol, when combined with the spirit of eerie water, 
thickens it, and quickly causes it to adhere to metal, to exit with it. And believe me, this accretation excels in the art, as far as alchemical gold is concerned, although not as much in terms of medicinal virtue. Pay attention, therefore, to why the philosophers have placed countless preparations, such as calcinations and solutions, etc. And they have done all this so that the spirit of the FDH essence can be well joined to the ferment. And they have performed many repetitions, so that the spirit already united to the body in another operation could strengthen it through another spirit. And thus they made one water, and they calcined the body, and they said that it adhered to the spirit. And they separated another water and dissolved it, and coagulated it again, etc. And thus they labored for many days before they achieved any medicine. And it is known to you how they sought through various operations and great perils, whereas here it is accomplished with a much better ingenuity, namely in a single action. And it is necessary that this medicine be the best and better. However, you should know that the spirit of the quintessence aids, and also there is a greater harmony between the spirit of vitriol and the nature of gold, because both originate from the same principles, being minerals. Therefore, the spirit of vitriol, when joined with the spirit of eerie water, thickens and quickly makes it adhere to metal, zing it with itself. And believe me, this zation is exceedingly excellent in the art, as it pertains to alchemical gold, although not as much in terms of medicinal virtue. So you may ask why philosophers have proposed night preparations, such as calcinations and solutions, etc. And they have done all this so that the spirit of the quintessence may be well united with the ferment. And they have made many repetitions, so that the spirit, already united with the body, may be strengthened in another operation by another spirit. And so they took one water and calcined the body, and they said that it adhered to the spirit. And they separated another water and dissolved it and they coagulated it again, etc., and thus they labored for many days before they obtained any medicine. And you should know here how they sought through various operations and great perils, which are completed by much better ingenuity in this one action. And it is necessary that this medicine is the best and even better, or by turns it will exempt you from all the labor of solutions and coagulations. The reason is that this is the hidden oil that makes medicine penetrable, friendly, and capable of joining with all bodies, and it acts more e-actively in this manner, so that there is nothing more secret in the world. Therefore, I say wondrous things that would be incredible to all ancient philosophers, namely that if you know how to separate this well from its watery nature and work with it according to the given method of mixing, you can compose the stone in 30 days. However, this oil is not necessary in the vegetable realm by itself, as solutions and coagulations there, as mentioned, occur quickly, but if sublimation occurs there. I believe the tincture of the stone will greatly expand. I do not think there are any further instructions that I have not disclosed to you in this short letter. Therefore, choose your purpose from it, praising God who lives forever and ever. Amen. In this epistola, Acritationis Ramoni Lilly.